In finance, if we know we're going to deposit 5,000 bucks at the end of each year, we want to do that for 10 years, and we know what the period, in our case, yearly rate is, we have an annuity, equal payments made with equal time between each payment. So to calculate the future value of this annuity cash flow pattern, we can use the math formula, or we can simply rely on Excel's awesome financial functions. Future value, the rate is the period rate, annual 12% with one compounding period per year, comma, NPER, that's total number of periods, comma, PMT, that's our $5,000, which has to be the same amount each period. Now in finance, we have to think about cash flow. That 5,000 bucks, if it's yours, when you put it into the investment vehicle, it's actually a subtraction or a minus cash flow. So we have to put a minus sign, comma. We don't have any current amount in the bank, so we skip over that, comma. We can either have an end annuity or a begin annuity. Our payments come at the end of each year. Since that's a default, I'm not going to put either one of those arguments. And that's our formula, close parenthesis, and bam, that's our future value for this annuity. But Sim Finso at YouTube asked, but what if the 5,000 bucks increases by 10% each period? In that case, we cannot use a simple function like FV. Now on this sheet, OS for old school, we want to see two solutions that will work in any version of Excel. Now we have our inputs here, and we first calculate total number of periods. That's total years times number of compounding periods per year. Enter. We calculate the period rate, annual rate, divided by number of compounding periods per year. There's our 5,000 bucks. That's the percentage increase. Now I've already typed this out 0 to 10. And for the first payment, well, there is no increase. So I'm simply going to go and get that amount right there and Enter. To increase the PMT by 10%, we say, hey, look at the previous cell. And we want to multiply it by, in parentheses, 1, which represents the full principal amount, plus 10% change. And I need to hit the F4 key to lock it. Close parentheses. Control Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. And then I hover my cursor over the fill handle. And when I see my crosshair or angry rabbit, I double click and send it down. And so we're getting a 10% increase over the previous period all the way down. Now we need to calculate the future value of each one of these individual amounts. Because we don't have one amount that's the same for each period, we have to make individual future value calculations. Now I hit pause and added some formatted and added this column. Now the trick is going to be if we have to bring each one of these forward, adding the interest that it earns, well, this one's going to be in the investment vehicle for nine periods, this one for eight periods, all the way down to zero periods. So the trick here is we're going to need a formula element that can deliver the number 9 to 0. So off to the side, I'm going to make this calculation. Hey, there's the total number of periods, F4 to lock it, minus the time period as a relative cell reference. Control Enter and copy it down. Now, we're going to use this over in each one of these cells, but eventually when we try to do it in a single cell formula, we'll have to generate this pattern of numbers in a single cell. Now we have a choice. We can do the math version or the future value version. Let's try future value version first. Well, the rate is the period rate, F4, comma, number of periods. That's this little bit. So we use total number of periods, F4 minus as a relative cell reference, the time, comma. We do not have a PMT here. That's when you have periodic payments, many of them the same amount over time, comma. We have a single lump sum present value amount. And it's a negative cash flow, so we put a minus and that relative cell reference. This one calculation, when I close parentheses, takes that amount and says how much it's going to be worth at the end. Control Enter. And then I copy it down. Notice I can't double click and send it down, because there's nothing to the left, to the right, or below. All right, go to the last cell and hit F2. Now if you want to use the math, 
we take whatever the amount is times, and in parentheses, 1 plus the period rate, F4. That 1 represents the full original principle, and that plus the period rate represents the percentage increase. And then we have to raise it to, using Shift 6 caret, that's an exponent, and then in parentheses, period rate, F4, minus the time at the head of the row. And that's our formula. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now, once we have these amounts, we can come up and use the sum function. The keyboard for the sum function is Alt equals. And then I highlight. And when I hit Enter, there's the future value amount if we have a $5,000 start payment, and that payment increases 10% each year. Now, a table like this is great if you need to see all the individual amounts. But sometimes you don't need any of this, and you want a single cell formula. The trick is we're going to have to generate first these cash flows in the cell, and then these cash flows. That means I need to take the 5,000 and add no 10% increase. Here I need to add 10% increase for one period. Here two periods, three, and so on, all the way to nine. So for this series of cash flows, I need the sequence 0 to 9. So in the cell. I'm going to start by creating a row reference as text, 1 colon 10, row 1 to 10. But that's text. And so we use the function indirect. Indirect is programmed to take text that represents a reference and convert it back to a reference, close parentheses. Now, right now, this actually gives me every single cell in row 1 to 10. And that's definitely not what I want. So I say, just give me the row numbers. Now, if I hit the F9 key to evaluate, that gives me 1 to 10, which is 1 off. Control Z, minus 1, F9. That's the array 0 to 9 that I need to generate these cash flows. Control Z. Now I say, here's the 5,000 times, in parentheses, 1 plus the rate of change. And we'll raise it. And we need to force subtraction before exponent, so in parentheses. Now, because this is an array of items, when I hit the F9 key, it gives me exactly the cash flows I had over here, all in a single cell. Control Z. Now I need to take these values and use the math formula, which is times, in parentheses, 1 plus. Now we use our period rate, close parentheses, and we need to caret, and we need 9 to 0. Now wait a second. Over here, if I copy that, Control-C, that gives me 1 to 10. And 1 to 10, if I subtract the full number of periods, and I'm very carefully going to highlight this and hit the F9 key, well, it gives me the pattern 9 to 0, but they're negative, Control-Z. Now I take the absolute value, ABS function, close parentheses. And this will work because multiplying will be left for later because the exponent will be calculated first. So now when I hit the F9 key, there's the exact pattern of cash flows from this column all in a single cell. Control Z. Now I take that and add. If you're in a version that's not Microsoft 365, then when you enter this formula, you have to use the keystroke Control-Shift-Enter, and then verify those curly brackets. But it's much better if you're using an earlier version to use the sum product function. Because although we're only using one array, it'll take that array calculation, and the sum part of sum product will add it. But some product doesn't require Control-Shift-Enter. So I can simply Control-Enter or Enter. And there's my single cell formula. Old school, some product, row, indirect, and even ABS. Now, it's much easier in the newer version of Excel. For our time periods, we can use sequence. The number of rows, I say 10. The defaults for the rest of them are start at 1 and increment by 1. Now, this is a dynamic array formula. So when I enter it, it spills from that top cell. The formula lives in the top cell. The remaining cells 
do not contain formulas. So if we need to edit, you come up to the top cell. And it's called a dynamic spilled array, because if I change this to 5, all the values spilled from that top cell. Now Control-Z. Remember, we need 1 to 10 here. But from the 5,000, we need to generate our initial cash flows. We need the numbers 0 to 9. Well, we use sequence. It's still 10 total rows, comma. We can accept the default for columns, which is 1, comma. The start, we're going to start at 0. The step is 1 by default, so we leave that out. And so when I hit Enter, 0 to 9, that's what we need for the initial cash flows. Over here, we use sequence again. Remember, in this column, we need 9 to 0. So we still have 10 rows, comma. The default is one column, so we skip over that. And we want 9 to 0. So we start at 10, or whatever it is, minus 1, comma. And the step here is going to be minus 1, close parentheses, and Enter. So what's so much easier is we can use sequence in all three cases to generate the sequence of numbers. Now we simply take this. There's our 5,000 times, in parentheses, 1 plus our percentage change. And then we close parentheses and caret. And so that spills the correct initial cash flows, each increasing by 10%. Here, F2, notice we come to the top cell. And watch this. We need all these cash flows. And when we highlight this, it knows to put the correct syntax, because this is a spilled array. Only the top cell, because that's where the formula lives. The pound operator is the spilled range operator. What that means right there is when that column right there expands, so will this. Now we multiply times, in parentheses, 1 plus our period rate, close parentheses, and then we raise it to that array of numbers. And now when I hit Enter, those are all the individual future value amounts. Now we come over and add Alt equals. And because this is a spilled array, when I highlight, it has the top cell with the formula and the spilled range operator. Tab, and there we go. If you want to do it with the new dynamic array formulas, this table and a sum function, that will work. But how do we put it all together in a single cell? Well, guess what? This is a spilled array. It's already generating the array of values. So I'm simply going to copy that. And watch, I want to show you a great trick. Control CC. That opens up this clipboard. Now, if CC doesn't work, you have to manually open up the clipboard. And then if you want to change your keyboards down in Options, you can use CC press twice, copies, and opens up the clipboard. Now I'm going to hit Tab. And we need the second part of this, because that spilled array is the formula element we already have saved. Now we highlight this, Control-C. We have them both saved in our clipboard. I hit Enter. Alt equals. I click the first formula element. Then I click the second formula element. And there's the formula when I hit Enter all in a single cell. So we can have a single cell formula with the amazing new sequence function. We can build our cash flows in the cells using dynamic spilled arrays, and then add them with the sum. And if we want to go old school, simply grab the first cash flow and build a formula that you can copy down, increasing the PMT by 10%. Then we can use either the math formula, copy it down, or the future value function. We then add. If we want to do it all in a single cell with the old school, there's the formula. Now here's your bonus. Now the question said increase 10% each month. And the way we did it here is we did it by compounding period. So if I put a 12 here, there's the months. But when I went and looked and searched online for how to do a step up SIP, which is what this is called, I found lots of different conflicting description of how this works. So I went off this web page here, and this calculator here actually runs it as a begin annuity. So the first payment of $5,000 comes at time 0. And it says down here 5,000 per month. But the 10% jump up doesn't happen till the second year. What that means for our PMT, 
is we'll have to have $5,000 for the first 12 months, and then the $5,500 for the next 12 months, and so on. So we're going to start our sequence formula for the time. Number of rows is going to be 36. And we're adding 1, because I want to start at 0. And according to this calculator, the first payment will happen at time 0. And here, somehow I need to raise the 1 plus that. These all have to be 0 up to 12. Then all of these up to 24 have to be 1. So we create that sequence of numbers, of course, using sequence. We're going to have 36 rows comma, comma. The start is going to be 0. Now when I enter this, this is not correct. But we need to convert all of these to 0. So in the top cell where that spilled array lives, we divide by the compounding periods per year. Now we have a pattern. All of these are 1 or less. So we can use the integer function to move down to the next integer. And there's our zeros. That'll be our exponent. There's our ones. So at the top, we take the 5,000 times in parentheses the rate of change, 10%. And then caret, there's our exponents. So that's how we generate all of the 5,000s. For each month, that's the correct cash flow in year one. Then in year two, it jumps to 5,500. Here, instead of starting at 35, we're just going to start at 36, because that payment sits for 36 periods, comma, comma. And we're starting at 36, comma. The step or increment is minus 1. Those are the exponents. Now watch this. I need to refer to that whole spilled array. So I'm just going to click in the top cell and type a pound times, in parentheses, 1 plus our period rate. And then we raise it to that array of exponents. Control Enter. Those are all of the individual future value amounts for each one of the cash flows. Now we can Alt Equals, click in the top cell, Pound. And that's the correct amount according to this website, where the amounts for a year are all the same. And they jump in the next period. And we start at period 0. Now if we want to mash it all together into one cell. We can do that. Copy. There it is right there. Tab. Copy all of that. Control C. There it is. Tab. And up here, Alt equals. Click. Cursor at the end. Click. And there's our single cell formula. And Enter. All right, so according to this website, we can build these spilled arrays and then use the sum function or simply mash it all together into a single cell. If we assume the original comment, then we can, again, use sequence in multiple different ways to build the initial cash flows and then the future value amounts. And then add, or do it all in a single cell. Or back here, old school. Create our formulas for our initial cash flows, the ones for the future value amount, math or future value. Add them or do it all in a single cell. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to learn more about finance, I have a free class here. And if you want to learn about the conditional formatting for a dynamic spilled array, check out this video.